Hi and welcome to the channel. This is the first in a series of tutorials on Geek's Toy. I am often asked how to make successful trades on the Betfair Exchange so making a series of videos on the subject seems like a natural progression. The first tutorial will guide you through the download and installation of the software. But you will first have to set up or register on Betfair if you haven't already done so. If you have done so that's fine but if you haven't then you'll need to click the join now button and fill in the details and deposit some cash. I recommend you start off with a bank of £80. We don't want to go too high too soon and if you're not familiar with Geek's Toy it's a good idea to start from a low base. So set up the Betfair details first and then move over to www.geekstoy.com and you'll be presented with this page. The first thing we need to do is to click on the icon for download of the software and that splits into three. You've got download for Betfair, download for BetDAC and Matchbook. I personally concentrate on Betfair so I'm going to click on the download for Betfair and when you do that will download in the corner. Now I've already downloaded it so this is the icon that's in your downloads folder and if you click on that or double click on that that will bring up the installation and a couple of minutes Geek's Toy will be installed on your computer. So click on the icon and then type in your login information. Click login, that will take a couple of seconds to get through. Just load in the application now. And when you go on to the screen, you'll be see the introduction to Geek's Toy and a lot of very useful information that they, they give. So you can have a read through that if you like. Uh, I'm going to with and I'm going to concentrate on the side panel. This is where all the information is to be found and the races for the day. So if I click on the horse racing and then I can click on GB and click on the races. So for today at Chelmsford I click on the nursery and this will bring up the grid structure for Geek's Toy. Now this is not what Geek's Toy is all about. We're still not at the ladder stage yet so we need to get rid of this and change it to the ladder structure. So I'm going to right click on the panel at the top and then click show ladder. I'll just get rid of the grid and we can put down the ladder structure. Now when this first comes up and when I first saw it I was a little bit in two minds whether to carry on with the software but the charts at the top really didn't do anything for me but I know that a lot of professional traders on Betfair do use these charts and quite successfully and also on this side here they use this charting system. I tend to make things a little bit more simplified so over the next five or ten minutes I'm going to run through the changes that I'm going to make on this software and you'll see the difference from the initial screen to what I consider to be a simplified and easier version to use. Now I first want to get rid of these boxes in the middle. This is where your match bets and your unmatched bets go and I'll go through why I'm going to get rid of these a bit later on. So we need to click on first of all the race title. So this is the race title here, the Six Furlongs Nursery. I'm going to right click on that and scroll down to footer layout and you can see that match bets and unmatch bets have been ticked so I'm going to untick each one in turn and that gets rid of the boxes at the bottom of the software. Now you can see also at the bottom we've got the graphs now I don't really need those because I've got the graphs on the right hand panel so again I'm going to get rid of these at the bottom just to make a little bit more space so this is the step that you need to do to get rid of those graphs at the bottom. We right click on the top, we go down to footer layout 
and we go across to Betfair graph display and click off. So once that's done we've got rid of the graphs at the bottom and we've still got this graph over here so you can see Misty Moo and see you mush are still over there with the graphs it's early days in the betting so the graphs haven't really progressed that much now the next thing I'm going to do is to get rid of those charts at the top underneath the name of the horse so again I right click on the top go down to ladder layout go down to screaming ch streaming charts and click off so that will again take that off so we're just left with this ladder structure here in the middle the next part I'm going to remove is the show traded if you can see next to the blue staking system we can see how much has been traded on each horse now a lot of people again think this is very important personally it doesn't come into my betting philosophy so I'm going to get rid of the show traded because I think if you rely too much on what's happened in the past I think you're going to come unstuck certainly if you're not familiar with uh, racing patterns so I'm going to get rid of the show traded because I think the future is not related to the past when you're betting on Geek's Toy so I'll click on the right click on the title go down to show traded and click that and that will get rid of the show traded part so we're making this slightly narrower and it's beginning to take shape but we've still got quite a lot to do the next part is to make the chart width a lot smaller because I want to get more horses on the screen at the moment I've only got four so I want to make it narrower so that I can see more horses at a glance so I'm going to change the chart width on this section from 50 to 0 and you can see again that narrows down this so I can if I wanted to I can add in another horse in this part and I'm going to do that later on but we'll go through that um, eventually the next custom is looking at the header where you've got the name of the horse the silks the number of the saddle cloth and the stall number I think the stall number is very important and the silks are optional if you want to have the silks up there keep them up and the saddle cloth number again is important for me because I deal in handicaps and I tend to favor the top weights in handicaps so keeping that information is important but again if you want to get rid of it just go right click on the top click options and then untick the boxes but we're going to keep those in place for now next step is making the horizontal margin a bit smaller so you can see on the screen the distance between each number is quite wide so we're going to change it so it's a little bit narrower so we can fit more of the prices on the screen and I'm going to right click go to ladder layout go to horizontal margin and then click number one so you can see we've got more of the numbers coming up on the screen so we've, again we've got a, a larger layout and that's going to be important later on because I'm going to change the size of this I'm going to move it up and then we can fit three races on the screen I'm also going to change the vertical margin to three same steps right click ladder layout vertical margin and click three and again that's making this a lot smaller than it used to be so we've now got room for another two horses in this section so that would be six horses that we can view at the moment I want to improve the top section where the horse's name is at the moment it's quite small and I'm struggling to see the horses so I want to just make it slightly bigger and I'm going to change that from 6 to 8 right click header layout font size and then go down to 8 and I click that and you can see the horse's name is a little bit bigger and we can see it a bit clearer at this point we're looking at the stake button font size so at the top we've got the stakes and we've only got five in there at the moment now if you want to use a variety of stakes I suggest you make the font size a little bit smaller and then we can put in more stakes and you've got more options to do when you're actually trading 
So this time we're going to ladder layout, stake buttons, font size and changing it from 11 to 8. Now when I do that, that will make these smaller and if I want to click on that, that will become my stake. So if I want to put £5 on, I can click on the 5 and that will become the stake for that particular race. Now I said before that I wanted to put three races on the screen at the same time. I'm not just going to limit myself to one. So this is done manually. I can click in the bottom corner and hold it and drag it so that it goes up towards the top. Now I generally settle on looking at five. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Ten numbers. And I can see there, I've got a good idea of how much has been traded on the bet side and how much on the lay side. So that gives me an option and you can see now I've got room underneath to put in a few more of the races. So let's do that now. We're going to the right panel. We clicked on the market navigator and we're going to put in another race which is the 610 6 furlong nursery. So I'll click on the race. That puts up the grid again. I'll tell you how to change that later on. So we're going to go back up here and click show ladder and I can click off that. The grid won't come up once we've done the changes that I'm going to suggest later on and I can put that underneath on that side. So we've now got two races and we're looking at four different horses and I can put in another race underneath which is the maiden race at uh, 640 and again get rid of the grid but we'll go through that later don't worry about that for the time being so we've got three races where we can now look at I want to add a few more horses in so the next step is to go to ladder layout maximum columns you can see it's gone four at the moment so we've got four horses visible and I'm going to change that for six for the time being we will be able to view more a little bit later so I'm going to put that in at six for now and you can see we can quite comfortably now see six horses at a glance in each race. To make more room for more horses we can first of all make the side panel a little bit smaller so we can go from slim to ultra slim. If you right click on the top of the panel go to layout and then ultra slim. Click that and that will make that a little bit smaller so we can move that over there and we can add in another horse next to it on the right hand side and if you want to you can change the color schemes so right click on the top go to color schemes I tend to prefer the purple which gives it quite a clear distinction between the betting at the top and the lay down the left hand side and you see that looks a little bit more pronounced so you get a bit better visual effect but there are different options you can go to the color schemes and click on the red and that will change things for you uh, you can put it in green so if you get fed up with one color you can go to the next one but I'm going to keep it at purple for the time being now as much as I love geeks toy it is quite a lethal software if you don't watch what you're doing I've made a few mistakes early on where I had the staking system set and I just clicked on the screen and before you know it your bet's on or you've laid the horse and to get round that problem I've come up with a system where I'm going to put in 0 0.01 in the backing and the laying and then I'm going to make that the default for each one. Now obviously you can't put a penny on on Betfair, it's £2 is the minimum stake but what that does it means that if you click on the screen for example on Swallow Street I've got it clicked on 0 0.01 so if I accidentally click on 2.96 and I have a hundred pound stakes highlighted I'm going to put £300 on or whatever the stake is that you're going to put at the top so for security and I can't stress this enough 
you need to make a 0 0.01 and keep that highlighted all the time so if you do accidentally click then you are only put in a penny on and it's not a big issue Geek's Toy will let you put a penny on um, so it's just a security issue for each one and you can see in the top alongside each one the default stake is 0 0.01 so I don't need to highlight it but if I do highlight it that will change at the top so I'm going to keep it at 0 0.01 for the time being and then you can set up your staking plan so five pounds if you want to you can put in ten pounds and I'll show you how to make your own staking in a little while so that changed to twenty and so on across I'm always going to change it back to zero point zero one so how do I change the staking number now if I want to put I can see that I have a lot of stakes already implemented down there but if I want to put in a new stake for example I haven't got one in at 8.5 so if I want to put a new stake in I can s click on the stake icon and then go up to the top and type in 8.50 now I need to click off that and then click back on it now when you click back on it it will give you a plus sign in front of the 8.5 and you need to click on that and that will put that in your column so when I go down now I've got the 8.5 stake already in the column and I can click on that and that will give me the stake that I require now for the next part I will need to make a bet so on the right hand side here is where you put in your betting options if you've put it in for that preference and I'll show you how to do that later on so I'll need to click on the two and then I click next to the odds that I want on the right hand side and when I click that that will put the bet on for me and you can see at the top the bet is on to win three pound eighty or the liability is two pounds and at the top it will confirm that you've put two pounds on this horse now once I put the bet on you can see that I have on this panel the match bets have now come up so that confirms the Swallow Street three two pounds to win four pounds and that puts that in a little side panel so I can have that open all the time just to see what the bets are and if I click on the profit and loss you can see that that comes up in the profit and loss and I can see all the runners not just the runners on the screen but all the runners in the race and the position I am in at the moment I'm going to put an unmatched bet at the top there and that will fill up in the middle screen so I know that I've got two pounds on at 3.25 and over on the side you will see that the display now shows my unmatched bets in this section now if I want to keep that bet in running so that when the race turns that will go off but if I click on the green box that will put a K in and that means the bet will stay when the race starts and it's called in running so that bet may be taken after the race has been started if I want to remove the bet I'll click on the bet and that will remove it from this particular view and also it will remove it from the side panel I can see I've put the two pounds back on on Swallow Street now this is to highlight the fact that you need to change that so that it doesn't round up or down the bet so the actual bet is two pound twenty five but it only shows as two pound so I want to show that so that it's the exact amount that I'm putting on and to do that we go to visual options after right click in the top go to round bets click on that and that will put the exact amount in the middle section where you've put the bet on now I did say before that the default market opening is the grid structure so I want to change that and to do that I'm going to click on the market navigator go down to default market open and click on the ladder so that will now put up the ladder when I open up a race instead of the grid and that will be much easier and save you quite a bit of time 
The other part I want to get rid of, when you're familiar with everything, is to get rid of the show help on startup. And we need to right click on the top, go down to show help on startup, click on that, and that will get rid of the screen. When you first open it up, you won't need to keep clicking off the, the help. But certainly use that when you first uh, go on Geek's Toy. Have a look through the information. Another part that I find useful is the Auto Center button. Now, if you've got Auto Center on, then if you put your bet in here, for example, see you mush, that's not the center between the prices. So it will automatically adjust so that you can see just the lay price and the nearest betting price. So if I want to make sure I can see the bets that I've got on instead of the prices. I'll need to put the bet in and then you can see it's flicked back there and you can see that I need to go to auto center just to stop that happening. So when I put that in it won't flick back. So I can get rid of that bet and then just move it with the arrows or the side panel arrows just to move it where I want to and I'm not having the the horses prices going back to the center all the time now there has been quite a lot to take in on this first episode and there's just a couple of more uh, changes that I want to make to the preferences and you can see at the moment it's a, a lot different than when we first started so we've we've got more horses to view we've got three races, we've got rid of the graphs at the bottom, we've got rid of the match bets and the unmatched bets, the charts have all gone and we're left with a basic simplified structure. Now the next section I'm going to get rid of is on the right hand side. Now this is the hedge market so if I click on any of these numbers that will automatically put the bet in and I will for example, if I put in the note 0.03 there with the price, it will automatically remove my bet and lay it on this near side. Well, keep the bet, but it will lay it on the near side. So let's do that now. I'm going to click on that, and then across the top, I'm going to have a loss on this market of 3 pence. If I put it in here, it's not going to get taken straight away. So if I click on the 0.01, it's going to go in there. So if that gets taken, I'm going to make a profit on this of 0.01 pence. So I'm going to put it in there and you can see how that works. So I click on the 0.01 and it automatically puts that bet in for me. Now if I click on there, obviously, it will take, get taken straight away. But I need to wait until this bet gets taken for that to happen. So I'm going to click off that. Now the second part to this is that it's duplicated at the top. You can see the 0 0.03 is where it stands at the moment. So I can click on that if I want to. And that will hedge this particular horse's bets. So I don't really need this side panel for the moment. And I'm going to get rid of it. Again to make more horses visible on the display. Before I do that, I'm just going to tell you how to put your bet in the middle section. If you go right click on the top, go to ladder layout, then bet display, and you can move across and you can put it in a dual column or a single column, or you can put it in the price column, which is what I do. That means that your bet, when it comes on, will go in this middle section here. So that's how you would put that on. It's quite useful, but again, you can put that anywhere you like. And there's quite a lot of other things that we're going to have a look at, maybe in later tutorials. But for now, we've just got one last change to make. And that is to remove this column. So I'm going to right click, go to ladder layout. And then I'm going to go to profit and loss. And you can see at the moment it's in its own column and I'm going to change that to off. And again, I'm going to do that for security purposes because if you go back to the screen and you click on your mouse, you could actually click in the section. 
on the right hand side and you might not want to do that and that will automatically hedge the market or hedge the bet on that particular horse so up there is a little bit safer so I'm going to change that now and then we'll have a look at the result and there we have it so that's more or less the finished article the last thing I need to do is to make these more runners over this side so at the moment I've got six I might be able to change that to let's check ten you can see ten fairly comfortably there might want to change it to nine but I can fit ten in so I've got plenty of views on the runners in the race I've got three races I've simplified everything and I've got rid of the charts I've still got the graphs on the right hand side I can see the match bets that I've put up and it just makes everything a little bit easier when you first start now as you get into Geek's Toy and you want to put things back in you know do so if the charts are helpful to you and they are to a, quite a lot of professional traders then by all means put them back in so that's how I set up Geek's Toy in the next tutorial we'll have a look at some of the other features and maybe doing a few trades and you can see how that works so thanks for watching if you have liked the video then if you want to subscribe then click that it's free to do so and you won't miss any of the videos and if you want to leave a like that's up to you and if you've got any questions you want to put in put them in the comments section and um, I'll answer those next tutorial or if I see them in future tutorials. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you shortly.